Hi, today we're going to be using Fusion Transfer Gel, which you can use to transfer graphic images onto wood to make signs, or you can transfer them straight onto furniture to make your piece look really stand out and different. You can see the examples that I've got here. You can use uh, black and white images or colour. First of all, you're going to need your sign board or a piece of wood or your piece of furniture. I prefer to use a matte finish paint just because it stays on better and you get less of the image rubbing away. So what I've done is I've just pre-painted this with just one coat of uh, some kind of chalky paint, either milk paint or fusion paint. Uh, and then you're going to need a graphic image. I got this one from the Graphics Fairy. She's got a great, uh, she's a great resource with lots of antique vintage images. And as you can see, I've printed it out in reverse. That is a great tip right there because what we're going to be doing is putting the image down, face down on our piece of wood. So it's going to have to be printed in reverse and you'll find the settings for that on your printer. Now this one is not going to fit on my piece of wood that I've chosen here. So what I'm going to do is just cut around, cut the words off. And what you want to do is cut around as close as you can to your image so that you get less, um, the less paper the better and you'll see why. So we've got our image ready, our piece of wood, transfer gel, and we'll just need an ordinary paintbrush. Now, you might have seen a previous video where I've showed you how to do this kind of technique. And what I used to do is to paint the image with your transfer gel and then transfer it on. But I've discovered a better way of doing it so that you minimize the lines around the edge when you have your image all finished is to put on the transfer gel on the entire board, on the entire surface, and then put your piece down. Okay, so we get a fair bit on our brush because we want to cover the entire surface. And we want to cover it fairly liberally. This dries clear, totally clear. So it's going on white. You don't want it too thick, but you don't want it too thin either. And it's good to work fairly quickly because you don't want it drying on you as you go. Just think I might put a little bit more just for security, safety measures. Can you feel just a nice, generous coat? Okay, so now we're ready to put our image on straight away. Center it as best you can. And what we want to do is get all the air bubbles out. So it's good if you can have a credit card or some kind of card on hand and just smooth out any excess um, if you've done it thin enough. So like I said, not too thick. You saw how much I put on. Now we just need to let this dry. So you can do that overnight is best, or really like 12 hours. Or I do a sneaky trick and put it in the oven, a really slow oven of like 100 degrees in Celsius and leave it there for about an hour until it's really, really, really dry. Right, so here we are back with my dried piece and I've brought some water, essential ingredient for our next step in the transfer process. So we've got water and a cloth. So we've wet our cloth. And the easiest way to start is to just dampen down your piece. So that's completely dry now. And we're dampening the paper that's on the back of the transfer gel. And this is where the magic happens. You'll start to see that the image is coming through. And that's because we're basically wetting the paper. So you know when you wet paper, you can see the image through. Um, as you start to see more and more image, I just tend to roll the paper around. Sometimes I put the cloth down for a little bit and I'll just use my fingers to rub off the paper backing. So the paper is dissolving and it's leaving the transfer gel behind. 
and the ink somehow magically sits in the transfer gel and stays there. That's the cool part. And you know what I'm thinking right now? We should have got a hand model to do this part because I know that getting some lovely close-ups of my less than adorable nails it just shows I'm a really hard worker. Okay? Well, there we go. Image starting to come through. So we continue with that all the way across the paper. The idea is to do it quite gently. You don't want to be too rough because you don't want to take away the actual image, which will come away if you start to get really heavy handed. So I just really gentle with the cloth and really gentle with your fingers. As you get down to these last sections, you'll be looking for little white shady bits as it dries to see if you still might need to rub off a little bit extra paper. So there's some little parts here I can see in the black lettering. It's just a little bit of a fuzzy white. So just keep working on those till all the paper's removed. If there are still little furry bits of paper when you find that it dries, um, occasionally I've, I've had to do this is just get a really fine grade sandpaper and just give it a really light sand but you do that when it's dry. And there you go. I'll let that dry for a few minutes and clean up my mess. So to finish off our piece today I've brought in a few options. Um, you can use more than these options but here's a couple. There's the Tough Coat Sealer which comes in a clear and it gives a lovely coat. It's a non-yellowing coat. It's also excellent for high traffic areas like if you're doing tabletops or the tops of chairs that you're painting them and you want that extra um, tough coat. So that's what that does. It also comes in an antiquing tough coat sealer. But today I'm going to try the antiquing glaze by Fusion. And it's a little glaze that just sits in the crevices like I thought it would sit nicely in the wood cracks here of this pine board piece. Also you'll notice on our sign you can still see a slight shadowing of white that looks like we haven't removed all the paper which I totally have tried my best at removing it all. But that should all be just fine once we add our top coat on. So we'll see how that goes. So I'll just give it a little shake. Looks a brown colour. That's how glazes appear. We've also got a lint free cloth which we'll need to, after we've painted the glaze on, we'll just remove it with the cloth. So we just paint it on, you can roll it on, uh, there's a number of ways you can use this. So it looks like we've totally ruined our bicycle, but I'll show you in a bit. We'll just do this a little bit at a time so you can see the difference. We get our lint free rag and we're going to wipe it off like this. And you can see it just sits in the grooves of this piece. Makes it look really old. Just going to work it in sections. Again, get a lint three cloth. Wipe it off. And do that along the sides as well. Go along the sides. And last little bit. Covered. And there you go. 